reports that advocates for the truth are pushing back on Trump's attempts to recast history to his liking. Take Judge Tanya Chutkin, for one. She's the one overseeing the federal January 6th case brought by special counsel Jack Smith. Yesterday, in a sentencing hearing for a man convicted of storming the Capitol, Judge Chutkin took exception to the idea that jailed defendants charged with violent crimes are somehow hostages, like Trump suggests. From the Associated Press, quote, they're being kept there because they are dangerous people, Chutkin said. Chutkin rolled her eyes and shook her head when she learned from a prosecutor during Wednesday's hearing that the vigil's organizers refer to their gathering spot outside the jail as, quote, Freedom Corner. Is that what it's called? Freedom Corner, the judge asked, sounding incredulous. It's more than just turning words around. It's more than semantics. It's separating truth from lies, something the rest of us are going to need to do more of and more aggressively for the good of the country as November's election nears. It's where we start this hour with some of our favorite experts and friends. MSNBC contributor and columnist Charlie Sykes is here, plus former Republican congressman, now MSNBC political analyst David Jolly is here, and former lead investigator for the January 6th Select Committee, Tim Hafey's back. So, Tim, here's who um, Judge Chuckin was referring to. Here's what the... Um, people Trump calls hostages did. These are the defendants being held pre-trial. Daniel Ball is charged with assaulting law enforcement and throwing an explosive device. John Banuelos is accused of firing a gun during the Capitol attack. Edward Kelly is charged with plotting to murder FBI employees after his release in the January 6th case. Dominic Box, that's another one that Trump calls a hostage, was arrested on DUI charge while out on pretrial release in his January 6th case. Edward Richmond Jr. previously killed an Iraqi civilian. It had an AR-15 in his home. And Taylor Taranto showed up at President Barack Obama's home with guns and ammo after Trump posted President Barack Obama's home address. So these are the folks that Trump starts every rally honoring and lifting up and calling hostages. What is, again, Trump's not gonna change, not a conversation about Trump, but what, what is the job, what is the task for the rest of us in making sure that the truth at least has a fighting chance against the lies? Yeah, Nicole, who, I, I appreciate that last graphic and, and it reinforces what Judge, what Judge Chutkin said, which these are the worst of the worst, right? There's a spectrum of, relative culpability of people who were at the Capitol on January 6th. There were people who were there and trespassed and went into the building for a short period of time and left. They've been prosecuted, as they should be. But then there are people that assaulted police officers, people that destroyed property, people that were organizing to commit acts of violence to disrupt the joint session, seditious conspiracy. He is upholding the far end of, of that spectrum, the most seriously dangerous people who are held in prison because they're either a, a danger to the community or a risk of flight as patriots and suggesting that, that they are somehow hostages, Judge Chutkin was incredulous, as America should be. These are not patriots. These are not hostages. These are people that have committed heinous acts of violence and are so dangerous that they must be held in prison. What can the rest of us do? Pay attention to facts. We, we talk about that on the show all the time. Facts should matter. As these facts play out again and again in different forums, and ideally in a criminal courtroom, my hope is that they resonate. And, and the false narrative that you're hearing uh, for now from, from Laura Trump and others is rebutted by truth. So, Charlie, let me let me start this part of the conversation with something that really jolted me. It was said um, on this show by Maria Ressa, who is a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Um, she went back to the Philippines um, and stood mm -hmm. up for what 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 Tim's talking about, the truth um, and the right to cover and knock down lies um, during Duterte's administration. Let me show you what she said about the addictive nature of disinformation. Remember Yuri Andropov, who's a former KGB chairman, former head of the USSR, right? He said, and this is the role of disinformation, he said, disinformatia is like cocaine. You take it once or twice, you're okay. But if you take it all the time, you're a changed man, person. 
we're on cocaine. I mean, I hate to say that coming no, from a Duterte it's, drug, yeah. right? But like, you know, we are weak, addicted, addicted, and we must find our solution. So how do we deal with this? Understand that you're being manipulated, that you do not have agency, and it isn't the just foreign influence operations or even your own political power plays that are happening. It is also the tech that is connecting you. It's, it's a daunting um, um, when she puts it that way. The forces on the side of, of disinformation um, are as powerful and addictive as cocaine mm -hmm. in her telling. Right. And uh, Donald Trump has um, has in, has forced this obsession on the Republican Party. And I don't know how many people actually believe the lies. But at some point, um, there's not much difference between pretending to believe something and then actually believing it. And you wonder what what point we're at here. Look, um, you asked, what do we do about this? I, well, I think part of what we do is you you, uh, you lay out the facts, but also you connect the dots that you just laid out. Um, there's real cognitive dissonance in listening to Donald Trump describe the people that you had up on that screen as patriots, as law-abiding freedom fighters, and making his embrace of them central to his campaign. And, you know, even people like Karl Rove have said this is a tremendous mistake. This is political malpractice. Because when you begin to point out what these individuals did, the attack on the police officers, you know, the, the, the viciousness of their assault on the U.S. Capitol, and then you juxtapose that with Donald Trump's rhetoric, and frankly, you know, unless you are deep, deep in the MAGA Kool-Aid, you're going to see the dissonance there. There's something not right about that. But it is interesting that with Donald Trump right now, uh, between Mike Johnson and the RNC, they are all in on relitigating the 2020 campaign and trying to retcon uh, the January 6th attack on the Capitol. That's the issue they decided to make central to their campaign. And um, I, I think that's going to be something that, that needs to be prosecuted by not just by the Democrats, but by people of goodwill and by journalists for the next year. Well, just take Fox News, David Jolly. I mean, I, I think that the facts about who Donald Trump calls hostages are probably irrelevant to, um, I don't know, uh, Laura Ingram or I don't know who's on at eight anymore, the new Tucker Carlson yeah. or um, maybe maybe. Again, I don't know. I don't know who the extremists are, but I, I know Brett Baer and Martha McCallum are serious journalists. And you, again, you don't need everyone in prime time on Fox to be horrified by the conduct of the hostages. You just need the people who are still journalists there to communicate, even to that audience, that these are not hostages. These are violent criminals. And, and I say that because I think there is a, a political point to what Trump's doing. He wants to convince his base of something so distant from reality to discouraged and tire and and sort of decimate enthusiasm of the Democratic coalition, say, we're not going to lose on this, we're going to win on this. But he's talking to a shrinking pool of, of people. And to answer Charlie's question, I mean, I have the numbers in front of me. I think 81 percent of Trump's hardcore base be believes the lies. That number is up from actually on, on January. 81 percent of Trump's strong supporters believe that Biden won the 2020 election because of fraud. 51% of Republicans, 58% of his most fervent supporters believe the lies. And those lies went before 61 judges. A lot of them, some of them Trump appointees, he lost 60 cases. I mean, the laws, the, 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 the lies were adjudicated by Bill Barr first, who couldn't find any. I mean, you know, the, the facts are so plain. But the fact that his fervent base is becoming more addicted to the lie is not politically important in terms of the numbers. How do you make sure that fact stays out there. Yeah, with, with the numbers within the Republican Party, where they are on believing the big lie, it really is now a self-affirmation feedback loop between Donald Trump, the candidate, and a party. And Charlie's point is exactly right. It doesn't matter if, if they really believe it or now if they just pretend to believe it. So I think for serious journalists, but also for uh, honest brokers who are voters and participate in today's democracy, shame plays an important role. And I know that's somewhat we should be cautious to reach for it. But look, given the amount of disinformation being sown by Donald Trump and Laura Trump and Mike Johnson and Fox News opinion hosts in prime time, there's nothing left for Vladimir Putin to do in this election.
I, I mean, the foreign actors who want to interfere in our election, their, their purpose is to cause distrust to cause confusion, to sow misinformation. It's not necessarily to pick the candidate. Well, guess who's sowing the disinformation right now? One of our mainstream candidates, or previously a mainstream party's nominee, Donald Trump, Laura Trump, the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. And so I think for sober minds, you really do have to shame them, not just for the disinformation, but for the danger. I mean, this disinformation was the predicate for a violent insurrection just four years ago. Right. There were three elements to the violent insurrection. It was the big lie. It was the disinformation. That's the first one. The second was the invitation to come to Washington. And the third was to go to the Capitol with strength. This is what they're now doing. They are saying you cannot trust the 2024 election. That's what Vladimir Putin wants right. America to be crippled by. Donald Trump is doing it himself. It's dangerous. It's absolutely dangerous. It's dangerous for Donald Trump and Laura Trump. And I think shame plays a role in this, not just for the candidates, but for Republican activists down the line that peddle this crap. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.